Taxpayers can, however, breathe a sigh of relief as no increases in tax rates will be incurred. Despite a year of national lockdown and the rollout of the vaccine, and South African corporate taxes will be decreased by 1% to 27% effective for companies with a year of assessment commencing on or after the 1st of April 2022. So this will be positive news for South African companies as a reduction in the corporate tax rate results in higher company profits which will attract both foreign and local investors. So for more on this, uh, let's unpack uh, with uh, Matthew Desanko who is a PwC's value-added tax partner. Good afternoon to you and welcome sir. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to your viewers for having me. Mm. When we look at assessed loss and interest limitations, uh, as they will result in the revenue neutral position in terms of government tax co collections, w does this really make business sense for, South Afri for the South African government uh, when it's collecting less money, and uh, as it already said that it envisages to reduce uh, further uh, taxes, like it said, with the David Tax Committee, as uh, the Director General in the uh, Treasury has already mentioned uh, in this interview now. Sure, I think, you know, like you mentioned, the, the, the focus of, of National Treasury and the Minister is, is really to give back to, to the households. And you mentioned that there was a, an above inflationary um, tax concession effectively on, on personal income tax. And I think that that brings wel welcome relief to households. Um, but, but, you know, no favour goes unreturned. And in, and in doing so, National Treasury is focused very much on, on what we would call the silent killers in tax. Um, so while we've given some away in, in terms of personal income tax cuts, and obviously corporate tax cuts, um, other focus areas by Treasury this year include uh, an increase in excise on, on tobacco and alcohol. Uh, and we mustn't underestimate the impact that that, that will have and, and the amount of revenue that, that that will collect. In fact, almost the complete uh, amount of revenue from from the excise and tobacco uh, ex, uh, tobacco and, and, and alcohol excise increase will fund the personal income tax rates. Mm. Um, and that, that increase this year is 8%. Of course, we know it goes up every single year. Um, but but that, that is quite a significant increase above inflation. Um, the impact of that, of course, will be, you know, to what extent that, that could fuel illicit trade. We know that any increase in excise uh, does have an impact on illicit trade um, and does, does um, fuel that market. And no doubt Treasury and SARS will be looking at that very carefully and focusing on reducing the tax gap in, in that particular area to collect all the all the collections it possibly can. I guess other low-hanging fruit this year that, that National Treasury focused on was, was an inflationary increase in the general fuel levy, uh, an and above inflation increase on the road accident fund levy. Uh, those will kick in from the 7th of, of April. Uh, and we've also seen an above inflation increase on, on carbon tax as well. And that's been provided for in, in the Act, at CPI plus two. Uh, and we can expect, you know, additional above inflation increases in these particular areas going forward, I think. Mm. Uh, we've also seen an additional levy on, on, on bio-based plastic bags. We've got levies on, on fossil-based plastic bags. So, again, these add small little amounts that are, that are really adding up and, and giving Treasury additional firepower to... Um, to give those big concessions on personal income tax and, and corporate tax. Um, and I think as well, these signal the future in terms of what the Minister and what Treasury will be looking for in terms of um, broadening the base and, and identifying other ways of, of collecting revenue. Yeah, so let's, the, let's now... On the VAT uh, yeah, side... Yeah, sorry. I just wanted us to... Sorry to chip in there. I just wanted us to talk about, you know, the real implication implications of uh, the syntax increases when you're talking about five rand fifty increase uh, for a bottle of whiskey cider or vodka i mean like it's not the composite amount given that uh, retailers are going to add uh, whatever markup uh, they will that so the implications are not the actual 550 on you know the broad increase in as far as syntax are concerned can you just explain to us how that will work and what will it mean uh, for the the, the syntax uh, victim or shall i say the drinker or the smoker who is a willing participant in that effect because you remember that during uh, lockdown level three or four Alcohol flies off the boots, and then during uh, lockdown uh, level two, it flies off the shelves. So people drink anyway. Yeah. 
So I think that that's the fundamental question. It's really around, you know, can consumers afford it? And and really what that means is additional tax collections for, for the revenue. Um, but but can those additional taxes be passed on and collected from, from the consumer in the street who's, who's buying those products? Um, and if the money is not available in the economy or, or there's not enough money in, in the wallet to pay for those taxes, then ultimately that'll be borne through the supply chain. Retailers will fill the pinch. Um, manufacturers of those products will also perhaps end up funding that. I guess you know what what we see is is a, is additional tax or additional revenue back in the pockets of consumers through the through the income tax um, changes in the brackets, but that'll obviously be taken away again through through purchasing. So if you're purchasing um, tobacco products um, or, or other alcohol products, you know that that'll be taken away in the form of the additional tax that will be passed through the through the supply chain. I think maybe just in another area around around VAT. You know, VAT is, is a significant tax. It's a, a significant component of, of revenue that's collected by, um, by SARS and, and used by National Treasury. We haven't seen the big changes or the, the, the VAT rate increases that we have in previous years. Uh, 2018, we saw a VAT rate increase. Um, Treasury held back on doing that this year, largely as a result, I think, of, of challenging economic uh, the environment. And obviously, VAT is a regressive tax, so any increase in, in VAT is going to impact on poorer households, you know, proportionately higher or significantly higher than on wealthy households, um, and impact on growth for the overall economy. So, you know, in some in some respects, a, a no increase in VAT is a welcome relief for for consumers. But we have seen some fine tuning around the rules and um, particular areas that that the VAT Act covers. And I think one notable mention is is clarity that's now being given around the zero rating on superfine maize meal. Um, there are various different categories of maize meal. Obviously, it's consumed um, in, you know, across the country. Um, we now have super fine maize meal, which is definitely a zero rated product, and that brings clarity to the market um, and it does give some concession. Mm -hmm. Another focus area that, that National Treasury is focused on and the minister is around the VAT treatment of gold. We know that gold is, is a highly valuable, highly um, uh, liquid commodity. It's traded quite extensively and there's been lots of reports around illicit schemes and malpractices in the gold space and missing revenue that's been collected. This year we've, we see an amendment dealing particularly with the VAT treatment of gold, um, aiming to ensure that the correct amount of tax is collected and any purchaser, any VAT registered vendor who's going to purchase gold will in fact be liable to collect and pay the tax on the sale of the gold. Uh, to SARS, which moves the burden or moves the liability away from sellers of gold onto purchasers of gold. And I think that brings additional complexity and changes in business processes and accounting to businesses um, mm. that are unanticipated in, in this particular budget. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much uh, for making time to speak to us and unpacking uh, some of the tax implications of uh, this budget. And of course, we're speaking here to uh, the tax partner at PwC, who is uh, Matthew Besanko. Thank you very much. Thank you.